before we can make a roll cast, we have to talk about fly line design, fly line taper. In an overhead cast, we throw all the line behind us in the air and it pulls against the rod, bends it, loads it, and we make our forward cast, agreed? So all of the weight of that fly line is pulling against the rod. That's not the case with the roll cast. Why? In a roll cast, we have a thing called a D-loop. This is what the D-loop looks like. It's that line hanging from the rod tip, touching the water there. And it's only that bit that is off the water. The rest of the line is on the water. It's not adding anything to the rod load. So it stands to reason that we need the majority of the weight of the fly line in that bit there. Let's say the first third of the head. So typically a spay taper suitable for roll casting is wedge shaped. Here's the rod tip and then the fly line goes from thick to thin all the way down to the tip. The term spay taper comes from the river spay in Scotland. In the olden days, they invented the cast called a roll cast. And they did that because in the upper reaches of the spay, there was no back casting space. They couldn't make an overhead cast and they used great big 18 foot big salmon rods. And so they had to invent a cast to just get the line out. So they invented the roll cast. And from that was a series of casts called spay casts. So a line that is suitable for roll casting often is termed a spay taper. Now, all of my lines are spay tapers. Why? Because they have directional stability. Imagine this is the fly line, this fly rod, okay? It has a thick bit and then it has a thin bit. Now look how hard it is for me to have control over that thick bit if it's far away from me. Now bring the thick bit closer to me and look how easy it is. Having the thick bit of the fly line closest to us when we make the cast gives us directional stability and control. And it also means that the thick bit is in our D-loop, giving us more weight to load the rod. A little bit complicated, but you need to know it before you just start making roll casts and failing. It may not be you, it might be the line. Let's have a look at where the line meets the water. I call it a contact point. And in roll casting, you want to use your eyes to really monitor that contact point. What do I mean? Watch this. The contact point is right at the rod tip right now. As I move the rod tip, watch the contact point peel away from me. See? But there's a point where it stops running away and starts running back towards me, doesn't it? And here we are, here's the contact point approaching my foot. There it is. The contact point is right beside my casting foot. We want to keep that contact point steady and under tension as it runs away and as it comes back to us. If we rush the lift on the roll cast, this is what will happen. See that bounce? The contact point ran away at such speed, lots of line dumped back on the water and we lost control. We created line stick again. We collapsed the D-loop. If you went at this speed, I'd be very, very happy. Okay, I want to introduce you to a new term in all roll casts. It's called an anchor. That bit there that's left on the water is called the anchor. You cannot cast over the anchor in any of the spay casts. I've heard people call it crossing the tracks. Imagine two railway tracks, okay? There's one of the tracks. You have to make the other one next to it. If you cross the tracks by doing that, you get a tangle. Whichever way you look at it, whatever you want to call it, do not cross over your anchor. Always cast between you and it. That's what we're looking for.